Some of these points, you may do most of these points. Uh, some of these points are going to seem very basic to you. I believe all of business is basic. It should be basic. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're doing, running a business, learning how to dance, doing a sport. Everybody will tell you the, the very same thing. You need to have good basics before you become an expert at anything. You understand that. I was a springboard diver. And you had to have your basics down with the easy dives before you can go on to the difficult ones. You have to have your basic dance moves down before you can go on to the fancy ones. You have to have your basic business principles down with you, yourself, and I before you can go on and lead a team of five to 50 to 500 to 1,000 people. You have to have the basics down. So with that, if I bought your company, and this is just Steve. Steve does not have an MBA. Steve has not gone. I did ha do have a business degree from University of Maryland. But to be honest, all I learned at University of Maryland was how to smoke pot and drink beer. I learned these rules of business from 40 years of running a business. I've had many successful businesses. I've had two businesses that do in the, well in the excess of a million dollars. My first one, when I sold it in 1995, was doing $12 million a year. And my second one, the Premier Ponds, we've been knocking out a million and a half now for three years in a row. So here we go. The very first thing I would do if I bought your business, you sold it to me, I walk in and I meet the team, I'd bring everybody together to have what I call a come to Jesus moment, all right? I wanna know what everybody likes, what everybody dislikes. I wanna know who's gonna stay in this company, who's gonna go. Where does everybody fit? Where are they going to fit in the new company, okay? I would set a 12-month plan and a calendar so everybody knows exactly what they are supposed to be doing for each month out of the year. I would write down all these company goals. I would come up with the very goal with the group in mind. So together, we come up with a company goal, one that everybody buys into and everybody becomes a part of and everybody is accountable to. Accountability is vital. I want to publicly post this, this company goal, okay? And I would etch it. I, we used to, I would get bourbon bottles and I would etch Premier Ponds 2014 goal, $1 million. I would put it in a very public place in a very nice way, and I would give all these bourbon bottles. We would have our names, every every name in the company and the company goal in the future, $1 million, and we would line up all these bourbon bottles, and we don't get to open them until we reach our goal. So I, I would put it out publicly and in a fantastic way so everybody can see it every single day so you're the entire team is driving towards the goal. Does that make sense? Please ask any questions you want as we go along the way. So that's number one, get everybody on the same page. Number two, talk about the money. I run an open shop. I will talk about every aspect of the business. I want to talk openly and honestly. I want everybody is okay to know who makes what and why they make it and how can you make it. I want to know if, if Joe over there is making $100,000 a year and Bobby's only making $40,000 a year, I want Bobby to know exactly what he has to do to start making 100 grand like Joe over there, okay? I'm not making any punches. I'm fair with everybody. I will always pay people more money than I ever promised them, but I want them to know that money equals their performance, not seniority in the company, but their actual important uh, performance. I want to talk about the bonuses, the commissions, and any other way they, they make money, all right? Nothing is fuzz, fuzzy or nebulous. Everything is crystal clear. Everybody needs to feel somewhat in control of their own financial destiny. I would start a 401k so everybody shares in the profits. Do you have a 401k or some sort of profit sharing in your company? At the Pine Company, we do. At the swimming pool company, we did. So everybody shares in it. 
And this is voluntary. They don't put in it. I put it all in there. I take 5% of all the profits and put it in for each and every employee each and every year. I want to know that if the boat sinks, they're going down with the ship. But if the boat is up and running fast and kicking ass, they're going to go along for the ride with them. So I want to talk about money openly and honestly. Number three, find out everybody's needs to meet their personal goals and their business goals. I want to know that what, what training, what equipment, what is anything that they might need so they can reach those goals, okay? I want them, uh, this includes uh, the time off work, you know, what, whatever they need. I, I don't want them to, 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 to run into burnout, for instance. I want to know what they need. Do they need extra training on a personal level? It's like what you're doing. You are probably paying not just for yourself, but in a lot of cases, you're paying for your employees to be part of the bridge or be part of the mastermind group. Well, that is one hell of a way for someone to reach their personal goals. Now, the bridge focuses more on the sales aspect, whereas the mastermind group, we, we talk a lot about personal goals, about what's at the end of it. And how do you achieve that? How do you wake up for your day of freedom one day to do, to do what you want to do, not what you have to do? See, I want everybody in the new company that I'm going to buy from you, I want them to know that I give a shit. Not just about them in the company, but them as a person. I want them to feel part of something bigger than just themselves. They need to know I care about them and I have their backs. Because if they know that, then they will care about me and they will have my back. That's the number one reason why if you're having a hard time building a team around you, that's why, because nobody wants to be around you. Because they don't trust that you have their back. I'll say that again. They don't trust you enough to stay with you and want to be with you. I know that's hard for you to take, but it's the truth. So find out what the hell they need to thrive on this planet and make it happen. Number four, install a whiteboard. A whiteboard is just like what it sounds. A big old blank piece of paper. It could be a dry erase board. It could be a pad. It doesn't really matter. And that's where ideas go. And what we do with, with the whiteboard is I would take in the, in the pond board, I would do it with all your people. Everybody should have a sales goal. Each one of our people that work in the pond, not just the, the owners, the foremans, but the employees and the worker bees, they have upsell goals, for instance. And we write at the top of the, you know, Bob, upsell goal this year, 20,000 bucks. Now he's a laborer in the field, but he has a goal to actually communicate with the customer while he's on site and somehow generate $20,000 worth of work. Now, it can be just bringing up an idea to which the foreman takes it over and makes it all happen and, and, and Bobby get, gets you know 50% of that commission or whatever. But his job, everybody needs to know only one thing makes a company go around and that's money. If they wanna make more money, the company has to make more money. And I'm not, not only do I not hide behind that fact, I actually promote it. And so what will happen is if you go in there, you go in your shop or your warehouse or whatever you have, and you have goals and quotas, I'm talking about obtainable goals and quotas, and you put everybody's goal up there and you track it. You don't have to say a word to anybody. The power of that whiteboard is unbelievable. There'll be a friendly competition that goes on between everybody name that is on that board. And the guys that'll start kicking ass, they can't wait to get there the next morning so they can update their own whiteboard. They don't have to turn right or left and make any comment. They just look at the board, everybody sees the board and they can see that, that Susan is kicking ass. And instead of going feeling bad about Susan or pissed at Susan, for kicking ass, 
Susan's job is to help the other people or let the other people know why she's kicking ass so they can kick ass too. We're all in this together mentality. So it's funny. In the swimming pool world, every day when we were rolling, we were running about 500 swimming pools. And in, in the spring, we would have to get 500 swimming pools up and running and ready. And a lot of it was uh, repair work, towel, coping, caulking, filter system, plastering deck work, patching, you name it, all the, the physical crap that needs to fix a swimming pool. And every day my five foremen would come in there and my company, the, the big company, I had five foremen and they each had a helper or two and they would come in and I would give them all the tickets. This is what you're doing today. This is what you should be able to accomplish in one day. I'll see you tomorrow. And, and tomorrow always looked like, why the hell didn't you get it done? I gave you a simple day and their response was, Steve, you're out of touch. You just don't know what it takes anymore to get shit done out in the field. So one day, five years in, they all came in my office and I said, you know what, guys? I'm tired of this constantly, me get, setting the expectation only to be getting in a pissing match the very next day. So here's how we're going to run it from now on. I had, I had a double cork board. That was a four by 16 board full of 500 tickets. I said, boys. You go get your own tickets. You only got one thing you have to do. You have to profit $1,500 a day. Now, I started this back in 1990, so five years before I sold my company. And they were like, really? We get to pick what we want to do? I said, yep. You go pick one day's worth of work, and tomorrow morning, you come back. They had a job cost every job. And your job is to just profit the company after all expenses, $1,500 per crew. That's it. Now they scrambled up there and they're all picking the shit they love. Some guy was really good at caulking. One guy liked patching. Some guy liked filter work. They just picked what they wanted to pick. They ran out there and now they've screwed themselves or set themselves up for success or failure because they planned their day and they picked their own medicine, right? So they go out there, and the next day they all come in. I said, all right, guys, how'd you do? Of course, I have no idea what's about to happen. But the first guy goes, yeah, I didn't finish. I picked off more than I could chew, and I only made like 1200 bucks yesterday. And the next guy says, yeah, I got it all done, but I made 1450 bucks." Third guy goes, yep, finished all my stuff, and I made 1600 bucks." Fourth guy goes, yep. I made $2,000 yesterday, and the last guy made like 2,300 bucks in a single day. And everybody looked at him, how in the hell did you do that? I said, okay, boys, great. Give me all your paperwork. Go get today's work. And they scrambled. And so every morning, they showed up, and all they were trying to do is outdo each other. I made two grand today. I made $2,200. I made $2,400 yesterday. I made 3,000 bucks yesterday. Great. I didn't have to say shit. I didn't have to give them a single job. I didn't have to yell at them anymore. I did nothing except let them pick the work they wanted, set the day they wanted, add it all up, and come back and brag the next day about how much money they made the company, which in effect was me. And I'm thinking two things. A, how fantastic this is. I don't have to do a thing. And these guys have never made more money for the company ever. And number two, how stupid I was to take so goddamn long to figure this stuff out. And all it was was friendly competition. And here's the most amazing part of all. They banded together like brothers. I've never seen sub camaraderie on the radio. Back then, there were no cell phones. It was all radio, you know, Motorola radios. And when one got in trouble at 10 o'clock at night, these guys worked a long ass day in the spring. They would call the other groups or I'm coming home. Anybody need help? And they would actually start helping each other so the next morning that person they helped could come in there and beat the $1,500 rule. 
So I'm telling you, the power of the whiteboard is unbelievable. Try it. But only if you want to make your life easier and you want to make more money. Otherwise, don't worry about it. <sighs> Number five, gather all information on the current climate clients and try to create reoccurring revenue. Now, I was in the pond business when I started all this stuff. So I would just keep a great database and I would push contracts out, annual contracts in the spring, in the summer, in the fall, in the winter about coming by and doing some work, you know, opening their pond, closing their ponds, whatever. And I'd give them all a 10 percent discount if they prepaid it. hundred percent of the people prepaid it. I remember telling my landscape buddy, I'm going to try to get people, give them a discount, have them prepay. And he goes, that'll never work, Steve. No one will ever prepay for any work that you don't do first. I'm like, well, you know what? I pre my, prepay my HVAC guy. I prepay the freaking sprinkler guy. I'm going to give it a shot. And guess what? 100% of the people prepay. Every year, every March, we've got 150 grand in the bank, 150,000 bucks in the bank, and I haven't gone out and touched anything. Now, if you, if you, have a painting company, maybe you have staining. If you have, or maybe you have some sort of maintenance you can do in the work. If you have electrical, maybe you do some sort of annual checkup to make sure the house doesn't burn down. If you do any kind of work whatsoever, you should set up a, maybe a, a, a warranty expiration free inspection, or maybe charge them a nominal fee. Say, hey, your warranty your warranty is about up. I want to, well, let me just tell it to you in a story. Two or three Augusts ago, I've been in my house like 25 years. So somewhere around year 23, I had the actual builder come back to my house and do $130,000 worth of just fixing shit up. Painting that, doing this, doing whatever. He was the real builder. So he, he basically brought my house back up to pristine condition. Well, one year later, he calls me up and says, Steve, everything we did last year is about to go out of warranty. I want to come through your house with you, walk every room and make sure everything's cool. And of course, I'm like, sure. And every time he, he went and he found, he had to fix all by himself. Nail pops here, a recrack there, something didn't work over here. And he, he compiled a whole list of stuff that he had to do himself under warranty. It might have been a day or two worth of a guy or two to do. But what do you think happened while he was here? I got 65 smart people on this call. I want to hear some answers in the chat box. So he walked through, putting together his whole long list of warranty that he's doing in his own dime, what happened? Yeah, like another $50,000 worth of shit. Well, you know, while you're here, I got this, I got that. I, and it was like ingenious. So I don't care what you do. You know, I get shit times. Steve, you're talking too pond centric. What do you mean I'm too pond centric? Every idea I have is a business idea. It's not just a pond idea. It can happen in anybody's business. So by having you call your people up and go, I'd like to do a one year walkthrough, what does that do? It creates instant trust. Boom. And that's why people buy from you anyway. It ain't the money. It ain't the money. They only hire you for the trust. If they're hiring you, but you're the cheapest guy in town, then we got to change that immediately. Because I don't want you to be the cheapest guy in town. This guy that did this horrible thing to my face yesterday, I had another procedure done, and he said, just come on in. I'll do this one for free. 
And I told him, I said, look, Doc, I got to tell you, man, you did this first thing. And, and I appreciate your attitude that you just want to make me happy. And you throw it all in for free. Like that doc says, I ain't stopping until you're happy. I said, I teach these business guys that same principle. See, what I want to happen for you, the same thing that happens for the doc, is your customers, I want them to cry one time. I want them to cry when they're cutting you your check for whatever it is that you do. Because when you hire the cheap guy, what happens? When your customers start hiring the cheap guy, they cry over and over and over again. But with you, boom, you charge in the right number so you can cover any deficiencies or any screw ups that you have. Okay? That makes sense to you? Mm -hmm.